wrong. Uh, a lot of the pictures that were tweeted out were pictures from decades ago. Some were pictures of fires that happened in the United States. They weren't even uh, occurring in Brazil. And so there's a lot of misinformation that's been spread about these Amazon wildfires. Even this year, while the number of fires is up 80% over the previous year, uh, it's really nothing all that new compared to last decade's average. It's about 7% higher than last decade's average. So this is the normal time for these fires uh, in Brazil uh, because the area is used for uh, a lot of different agricultural activities, whether for ranchers and farmers or for growing soybeans. Uh, there's, so there's a lot of economic activity. This is their dry season. This is when they have a lot of scheduled burns. Now, there have been some illegal activity um, and illegal burns um, through deforestation processes that shouldn't be happening, and, and that is problematic. But the crisis uh, is not what it is purported to be in the media. Okay. And what about this lungs of the earth claim? Like, How essential is it for that we have enough oxygen in the climate? It's not. This lungs of the earth uh moniker that the Amazon has received over the past several days and weeks uh, is just flat out wrong. Um, most biologists and environmentalists have said that we they don't really know where this phrase came from. Uh, it's even the 20 percent number that says it produces 20 percent of uh, the world's oxygen uh, is not correct because there's a lot of uh, respiration that occurs in the Amazon rainforest that with the decay that comes from older trees decomposing and the wildlife, the, the bugs and the beetles and the animals, uh, it's not just that they're producing oxygen, but they're producing the oxygen and taking in oxygen. And so even if we were to completely uh, eliminate the Amazon rainforest, which is not what I'm advocating for, that's certainly not what we should do, You know, there's still plenty of oxygen on the planet. Um, that's not a crisis, nor will it ever be a crisis uh, anytime soon. So you mentioned that, you know, the fires are a bit higher, but it sounds like it's pretty typical for there to be fires in the Amazon rainforest. What's sort of the historical perspective here? Can you put these this year's fires into context for us? Yeah, in regard to um, the, the, the past decade, they are marginally uh, higher or there's more of them over the this year compared to last decade's average, uh, 7% higher. So really not all that much. Uh, it's been several decades now that Brazil, the, the people of Brazil, the indigenous people of Brazil, the Brazilian government have recognized that the Amazon forest should be uh, a resource for them. And they understand that a lot of economic activity can come through that area. And so decades ago, they built a road essentially through the Amazon, and that's created some more economic activity understanding that they want to protect a majority of the Amazon rainforest, but they can also use it for economic purposes, mostly agribusiness. And so over the years, you've seen more and more business popping up uh, you know, throughout and ad adjacent to the Amazon rainforest because it, it is good land uh, in, in some instances for growing soybeans and for raising livestock. And over the years, they've had to clear brush and smaller trees and things of that nature. And to do that, uh, a lot of these burns are scheduled and controlled. Okay. So you mentioned the business interests. Um, is there a way for Brazil to both be a good environmental steward of the Amazon rainforest and be a good place for business? Absolutely. And that's one of the concerning things that I've been reading about this is it's just kind of pitted uh, the agribusiness of Brazil against uh, the environmental and the international community who want to see the Amazon preserved. And both of those things can happen. They're certainly not mutually exclusive. Part of the problem for Brazil, which is, has a very robust agricultural business, I believe it provides about a quarter of their entire gross domestic product. So it's pretty substantial. Uh, part of the problem is that the regulations and the permits for uh, scheduled clears and scheduled burns have become more cumbersome and more time consuming. And that's been problematic and, and created the perverse incentive of having uh, more illegal burns and deforestation. And so uh, you can have scheduled burns and you can clear certain areas uh, for sure to allow for agricultural productivity while protecting a, a majority of the rainforests. And at the same time, 
you want to make sure that if you are – um, protecting certain areas and you don't want them cleared for economic purposes, you are compensating the Brazilian farmers and the cattlemen and the ranchers and the indigenous populations who live there who are losing economic opportunity. You know, One of the things I equated to in the United States is the Endangered Species Act. And so if you own minerals underneath your property, if you come across a, a huge deposit of oil or natural gas, all of a sudden you're you're very wealthy and the value of your property increases significantly. If you have a endangered species on your property, say an endangered bird and you're a logger in Oregon or Washington, the value of your property and your business decreases significantly if that bird's habitat is on your property um, because you can no longer log. And so in that instance, what it does for the logger is creates the perverse incentive to chop down the trees, to destroy the habitat, and potentially lose economic opportunity uh, while also resulting in a worse-off environmental state uh, by destroying the endangered species habitat. Uh, And I think that's somewhat relevant to what's happening in Brazil is that there's a perverse incentive right now for some of these farmers and cattlemen to have unscheduled illegal burns because of the rigorous regulations that have resulted in limiting their economic opportunity. Okay. CNN is reporting that Brazil, quote, has banned the use of fire to clear land throughout the country for 60 days in response to the massive increase in blazing fires in the Amazon rainforest that has caused international outrage. End quote. Is this the right call? An outright ban is usually not the best result. Uh, if you look at where the burns have been scheduled and are there are legalized permits, you know that's areas where it should be allowed to continue. They should focus on the areas where illegal activity is going on. And if there is an international commitment to put out the fires in certain areas where that illegal activity is going on, that's where the concentration should be. And so Brazil already has laws against illegal deforestation and illegal burns. Those laws should be enforced, and that's where the forest fires should be focused on where we put them out. Uh, But this is still a way of life for Brazil. This has been happening for a long, long time. It it doesn't make sense to blame the, the current Brazilian government for something that's been going on for decades and if this is their way of life, um, the international community shouldn't chastise them for something that they've done for a long time and largely has had successful results in making sure that their agricultural community is well off while the rest of the rainforest is protected, which is a significant amount. So speaking of the international community, a few days ago, French President Emmanuel Macron offered about $20 million in international aid from him and others to help Brazil fight these fires. Brazil turned it down, has accepted aid from other countries. There's a whole lot of drama I don't need to get into. But does the international community need to help here, and should Brazil be accepting any and all offers? Well, I think the Brazilian government and the Brazilian people were frustrated with this entire process. One, because of a lot of the misinformation that had been out there. Uh, but also because of the sovereignty of the rainforest, that this belongs to them. This doesn't belong to the world. And the international community and the government of France and elsewhere were treating it like uh, this was something that was new, that was existential, and that was a crisis, and, and that clearly was not the case. And so I think it's fine for them to accept money, to allocate that money to Uh, farmers and cattlemen who may lose economic opportunity as a result of protecting the rainforest, as well as to put out the fires where they are occurring illegally. Uh, But at the same time, Brazil should have control of those resources. You know, this money shouldn't come with strings attached saying you need to do X, Y, and Z in order to receive these funds. Brazil knows best as to how to fight these fires. They have hundreds of volunteers who have known how to do this. Um, and to to schedule and maintain these for years now. And so let's allocate the resources to them, but ensure that they have control as to 